Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here. I am finally moved into my new apartment, sort of. Uh, I've unpacked some boxes. The room is not done or set up obviously like it used to be, but we'll we'll see where that goes and everything. But nonetheless, in two days, I guess less than two days at this point, patch 10.0.5 hits retail. And with that comes a handful of affliction changes, single targets, some AOE stuff. Really just, oh, I guess I guess only AUE, but I mean, it might change the way AUE builds are structured in plus. Uh, focused malignancies coming back, pandemic implications being changed in talent tree. A couple talent changes here and there. Just generally, AF's playstyle is not changing a whole lot, but there's new talents coming, which could change things up as far as, I guess, raid relevancy goes, with a plus relevancy goes, and all that. So, tonight's video is going to be discussing all that talent builds, single target rotations, AUE rotations, some projections for the raid, and just a general refresher, I guess, heading into patch 10.0.5. Now, I have seen some sims looking at 10.0.5 AF on PTR with malignancy, with PI being moved around the talent tree and all that, but I'm not sure how accurate they are at this point. There's not a, there's not as much disparity between retail sims and 10.0.5 as I assume there would be. So I'm assuming those sims aren't optimized. Not really sure. We'll figure it out whenever the patch goes live and things as well. I'm sure we'll know more in a couple of days, but at this point, you know, it's uh, time to get the ball rolling. So with that being said, any week where us add-ons or profiles you see in the video, links to my Twitch and Discord down below where you can get them for free. At the same time, I want to give one huge shout out to my patrons for you too far in the video as well. Thank you for all the support on Patreon, guys. 10,000 times. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, dudes. If you're looking at supporting on Patreon, should be a link up here as well as down below in the video description. So with that being said, let's just, I guess, jump right into it, starting off with talent trees because there's been some buffs, some recent buffs, some recent changes, some bug fixes, and talent changes. All right, so when it comes to talent tree changes, there wasn't a whole lot in the class tree that changed outside of Summon Soul Keeper and Inquisitor's Gaze. Now, there's one big thing here. If you're currently an Aflock on a retail and you can make good use of the Aranog ring here, uh, that is most likely due to Inquisitor's Gaze being the main ability that procs that because it deals Shadow Flame damage. Now, one change here. Inquisitor's Gaze, if you take this, it is no longer a passive pet that sits by your sh by on your shoulder all the time. It's not... Uh, it's not a passive constant source of damage. It's now a proc. Your spells and abilities have a chance to summon a, an Inquisitor's Eye that deals Shadow Flame damage over 12 and a half seconds. And it actually deals... The duration is in, is decreased by the, by the amount of haste you have on this as well, which is very interesting because I would assume it gets the same amount of cast off as in a faster window. But regardless, not having that constant source of fire damage means that this ring here, here Seal of Diana Chosen loses a lot of value for Aflox because it was previously like two and a half percent of your damage, maybe even a little more with Haunt and Shadows and Brace damage modifiers, but that is gone now for the most part. It will still proc off the eye, but it's not a constant source of damage. It procs, I think, twice a minute, maybe. It's not constantly casting fireballs or whatever it does, right? So that's actually a nerf for the ring um, if you had that. However, one thing, Summon Soul Keeper is busted. This ability was buffed a good bit during really beta it is doing a tremendous amount of damage in aoe we'll look at it in a little bit here in some uh dummy i guess test or whatever but it's doing a lot of damage in aoe it is very very strong i'm not sure if it's worth playing in single target we'll look at it more when it comes to the patch releasing in a few days on retail but nonetheless this this talent looks to be much much stronger than it was in AOE settings previously it might even be worth taking in certain spots which is very cool now, the other interaction here that was fixed two days ago, maybe a few more, but either way, it is Synergy, Grimoire of Synergy, and Grimoire of Sacrifice. So, in Shadowlands, Synergy, the Legendary. If you sacked your pet with a talent, it was a talent in the old trees, right? And Synergy was, was a Legendary. If you sacked your pet, Synergy, the Legendary, would still proc off your spells, being the player. You just proc it on yourself. This has been bugged since day one of Alpha. It was fixed five days ago or whatever. Either bugged or, uh, I guess, I'm, I'm just going to assume it was bugged. It was fixed five days ago. So from what I've seen in all the Sims, I've gained a decent bit of DPS. I think like 1.5k roughly going into Sacrifice here and grabbing Synergy. Now, that's sort of a rough number. I haven't run a million Sims. I've been moving. But it does indeed appear to be a DPS gain in single target by taking Sacrifice over Synergy. Because Baseline Sacrifice will do more damage what your pet will do but at the same time if you're playing sacrifice you lose some pet utility at times right you, you do sort of retain like an ability for example if you sack the fell hunter you, re you retain the kick right but you lose the, the devour magic part of it so positives and negatives there but either way when it comes to single target damage sack does seem to be a decent bit of an increase when it comes to you know not playing it now that sack and synergy work well together 
So outside of that, getting into the aft tree here, it's generally the same template. The big changes here, so this was buffed a few days ago as well. It was buffed by 25%. Before the buffs, it was doing a solid 0.0, 0.13% uh, of someone's damage in a 25 million DPS, or sorry, damage uh, log. It is beyond putrid. It needs a 2,500% damage buff, not 25. So uh, the latter could be a little aggressive, but either way, it's probably still very, 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 very bad. I haven't played with it. We'll do it a little bit here and see, but I mean, it's still very bad from what I'm assuming. Uh, either way, it's generally the same build and single target. The big thing here is that there are two nodes here that weren't here previously. So here, we used to have this talent. Pandemic invocation with two ranks. It is now one rank has it moved here. So PI is here. Soul Tap is just gone. This is Soul Tap's old location. Soul Tap's gone. PI is rank one out of one. However, it has the same damage, I guess ability effect or whatever as rank two out of two had in 10.0 so it's sort of a buff in a sense there however focus malignancy this is the big one this is replaced pandemic invocation here malefic rapture deals 30 percent increased damage to targets suffering from unstable affliction now in pve you only have one ua up in pvp you can do it with this thing and have three of them up we don't i don't do that so either way you know. uh if you pvp congratulations but regardless big damage increase here and this is what af I think this is what AF needed when it comes to a lot of scenarios where you had like either a really strong AOE profile or a really strong single target profile. You really couldn't have both, but this actually makes AF, I think, a good or competitive in those hybrid kind of settings, right? Where you can take two points of malignancy, have still options when it comes to AOE, but also just buff AF single target in general. It's solid all around. Besides that, Creeping Geth, same thing. Left Affliction, same thing. Dread Touch, same thing. Haunt, Haunted Soul. Uh, crescendo being the same thing here basically everything else is the same but over here i have one point going into sack from singularity and one point in sack or lash down from two because you got to spend one point somewhere to get into the final row here and i haven't tested it but i would assume that sacrifice is probably better than harvester of souls it could be a wash they're both probably be pretty mediocre in single target but at the same time it's an option so now i will say this is the build that I, has simmed the best for me there is a bit of a case being made. It doesn't sim as well for me, but at the same time, I don't think sims are working properly yet. Uh, I could be wrong though. Playing a build like this. So they're not playing Haunted Soul. They're pulling points out of here. They're going one point in Soul Rot, one point in Soul Eater's Gluttony, and one point, I'd assume, uh, maybe here, here, one of these two points, somewhere of DPS relevance, right? They're doing one of these points pr probably here, let's be honest, because if you tell it in the Soul Rot, and grab gluttony it basically sinks your soul eater's gluttony or sorry your soul rot with phantom singularity as long as you're playing the talent here because it gives you a, a, a cdr whenever your ua ticks right now the sims i've run prefer the full haunted soul build however once again sim might not, might not be working 100 but the big thing here is that this build has been an option previously but we haven't really had it in a sense i, I guess it hasn't had as much relevancy because of focus malignancy not being a thing more dots active when you're rapturing means rapture hits harder and this conduit now makes that or conduit it was a conduit not, it's not a talent but this makes it even more effective even stronger with having soul rot up with ps every rapture window now it depends where it's going to go like i said the sims i've seen still favor haunted soul and all that but we'll see where it goes but either way uh this is what i play more of a single target setting let's look at more of an ab kind of setting so when it comes to playing more of an AV build, Mythic Plus is Affliction, or I guess any kind of heavy, sustained AV setting, this is probably where I look to start. Now, there's a floater point here at the end where you can put sort of wherever you want, like in, in Crescendo, in Wrath of Consumption. You could even throw it in like, I guess, here or here if you wanted. The main difference being from the builds you've played in the past few weeks, looking at AF stuff on stream and, you know, the other keys and all kind of stuff, right, is that you're playing two points in Malignancy, two points in Withering Bolt, but no points, maybe maybe one point in Sacralash. Now, I don't think Sacralash is bad when it comes to AoE. It's just, I think there are more relevant points here, right? You can you can have a 7 slash 15% increase in corruption putting two points in here, or you can have a 30% increase in rapture damage in single target. And once again, AF is a bit lacking when it comes to single target damage. Even this build here is playing Siphon Life over AC with Vile Taint as a sort of a concession to having, hey, I need a little more single target damage in certain settings. Now, you're playing Sac here, you're playing Vile Taint, you're playing Siphon Life, and you're playing Malignancy. Now, let's say the final point goes here for Wrath, as we matter a whole lot either way. But the big thing here is that you're playing the Dark Lair row, Dark Lair and the Malevolent Visionary into Grim Reach. And they're also playing 
corrupting or creeping death into malefic afflictions and then one point in dread touch for that single target profile once again encapsulating siphon life with focus malignancy just that extra increase of single target damage all that funnel damage right and you're also playing seed seed into so so you sort of have the best of both worlds now this build seen some play over the past few weeks a bit gaining some value in like i guess Algothar's academy maybe a couple other keys here and there right but bringing a solid av profile with seed spam with soul flame with dark lair and grim reach and also having okay-ish single target with siphon life dread touch haunt and other kind of modifiers too once again malignancy brings a lot of extra single target in those single target slash prior settings now from what i've heard there's also a bug running around right now for what it's worth, which is that when your actual like uh, four piece here procs, it only buffs one of the three seed of corruptions you cast or issue send out whenever you're playing to the seeds. So I don't know if that's being fixed in 10.0.5 or not, but if it is that plus malignancy plus just having, just, I guess a better way, a good way to put it, it's just like a stronger, it's more like, more like just what's the word I'm looking for. So a universally stronger build. It feels like Malignancy is sort of the glue that AFS sort of needed to hold it together, making it strong enough or relevant enough in single target while still having a good AB profile as well. AF could be positioned to be pretty strong when it comes to Mythic Plus. So we'll see where it goes. But uh, let's take a look at it in single target and AOE. All right, so getting into single target stuff with Affliction. Now we're playing this build here. It's the generic siphon life ps build by the way i have seen some sims from vile taint simming higher than singularity i'm still playing singularity we'll cross that bridge when we get to it i i don't think Valtaint's gonna be better by the way we're playing P ps siphon life we are playing sacrifice we're playing malignancy pi and everything else is pretty much the same uh creeping death and the dread touch haunt haunted soul dark lair all that kind of stuff now i will say right now a try and do casting corruption on ptr takes like three casts for it to apply um so hopefully it doesn't affect us testing too much. But one thing I want to bring up here is that we are indeed playing Inquisitor's Gaze here and not Summon Soul Keeper. So keep in mind, once again, Inquisitor's Gaze has changed in 10.05. It is not a constant source of damage. It's not a pet you have at all the time. It's a chance to proc whenever you cast this. It's basically a trinket effect. It procs every once in a while. It's not a constant source of damage. So not having, not having that pet casting fireball every two seconds means that this ring here, once again, Seal of the Earners Chosen, loses a decent bit of value for Affliction Warlock. So it was around two and a half percent of damage, I think, right? Roughly two and a half percent in single target before. Uh, let's see where it's at now. So, all right, uh, just finals and that kind of stuff. No potions or anything. Uh, Precast haunt, UA, agony, corruption, corruption, corruption. There we go. Third time's charm, life and life. We're gonna drain here. Three stacks of shadows, embrace. Two, three. We're gonna singularity. We're gonna dark. Then we're gonna rapture four times. Uh, one, two three and four for dread touch there we are we're going to drain a bit here and once again we're going to just maintain the normal cycle here maintaining dread touch not over capping a rapture again here catch dots catch that catch that catch this might be a little weird trying to catch corruption because the weird refresh application part of it oh you just bugged out my weak aura that's sick we can keep that rolling though it's okay i'll just do it manually don't worry about that uh, <laughs> i mean hey uh t minus two days guys but uh, either way catch the ua here Keep draining. Uh, it's back. Oh, there's just two UAs up. All right. Well, I mean, uh, you know what? I can't wait really any longer to make this video, so we're just going to keep rolling with it, I guess. Uh, one fell. That's okay, I guess. Did I maintain my stacks? Uh, I did. God, dude. Help me. Help me. What is going on? Uh, okay, so I've actually gone Horde now, hoping the dummies are fixed in the Horde capital. I have no idea. I haven't tried them. Uh, here I am. I don't know why... Agony is applying twice and why corruption won't apply. Uh, hopefully that bug doesn't make it to retail in a day and a half, but uh, you know, T minus two days. So uh, what, what's this mount? Let's go. All right. So let's same thing here. We're going to open up uh, same build. I think else. No warm mode for what's worth. People that are curious. It's not on. Um, all right. Let's do it. Haunt. UA. Agony. Corruption. Corruption. Cor there it is. Third time's charm again. Siphon life. We're going to drain. Two, three, stat, singularity. We're gonna dark lair. We're gonna rapture four times. Two, three, four for dread touch. Cast our haunt here. And then for the most part, once again, just filling, maintaining dread touch, draining here a bit, rapturing a bit here, draining a bit, catching agony. We're gonna cast UA here. Did, did it apply two? It did not. Sick. All right, we'll catch siphon left. I'm gonna catch corruption a little early here because of the weird bug. Try to at least. Maybe, okay, there we caught it. Cool. Cast haunting in here. 
We're gonna rapture about now. Drain a bit, rapture again, catch this, catch this. Rapture again here, catch our UA, rapture again, why not? Catch the corruption, try to catch it, maybe if it falls, I, I did my best, I don't know. We're gonna drain, stay flat one more time here. Singularity and start rapturing. Uh, I think two is good enough right here. Two, we can probably do a third and second here. Catch the agony, rapture again, drain, try and catch corruption, try and catch corruption. Rapture, Haunt, UA, Siphon Life, we're capped on stacks here. We're gonna Rapture one more time. Up a big drain. Lost on Nightfall proc, but it is what it is. Gonna Rapture again here, catch the Agony. Drain a little bit. Rapture again here. We'll do one more, one more PS cycle, because why not? One more PS cycle, Siphon Life, catch the Haunt. Rapture here. UA, drain a bit. We have PS in about six, so we're gonna catch the Agony again. Rapture once, catch the Siphon Life. Try and catch Corruption, maybe, if it works out. Uh, hopefully it does, who knows. We're gonna Rapture, catch the Haunt. We already PS, Rapture two more times here, sure, why not? And that's, that's the gist of it, basically. But the big thing here, looking at the damage breakdown. So, Rapture being about 20%, UA about 15, Agony being about 11.5, Sacrifice being about 8.4. I've seen upwards of, upwards of 10% before. Meteor being about 7.3. Singularity 4.5. Corruption, everything else being similar amounts, right? But one thing's missing here. Where is my ring? Didn't even proc. <laughs> my ring actually didn't even proc. <laughs> That's actually really sad. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so, I mean, while AF is gaining some damage, I mean, it's gaining damage overall in the long run, right? But, like, uh, having this be so undertuned. I mean, Inquisitor's Gaze dealt, what, what did it deal there? It dealt a solid, where'd it go? It actually procced here uh, after it was over, after the, that last test, it procced by itself. So like here, here's the test we did. Where's this thing at? Uh, here, here's the test we did, right? The eyeball did a solid 0.6% of my damage. Very, very strong, very, very strong. You can see later on, uh, just random stuff happening when I was talking to you guys a minute ago here. It actually procced off the eyeball right here because there's eyeball damage. There's Brookkeeper's Blaze, the ring procking. And there's Meteor. So it indeed can... Uh, also, this trinket for what's worth can proc it too. So, I mean, both the trinket and the barrage can, but either way, like, the ring's been nerfed a decent bit just due to the passive, I guess, change to this. And it seems like they forgot to buff the damage in this thing too because, good lord, it is terrible. But the positive side of it is that Aft's looking pretty decent in single target. Let's take a look at an AoE. Okay, so getting into the AoE part of the video. Now, off the bat here, we are playing Soul Keeper over Inquisitor's Gaze. I wanna show you how strong this is in AoE. Number two, we're playing Siphon Life and Vile Taint uh, SL over AC because honestly, SL brings a better single target profile, a better prior profile. Just, it makes the build feel more universally applicable in a sense, right? Because you already have good AoE with Seed, with so with soul flame with with um, grim reach off your darkly every two minutes right the build already has solid aoe but it's lacking a bit in single target slash prio but siphon life can make a big difference there and honestly you're spamming seed as your, as your spender anyways in aoe so you're basically applying corruption every two seconds anyways right just watch it if it falls cast another seed but it shouldn't in aoe because you're spamming seed in the first place right so i played this build it actually feels better than it may seem it's solid overall. I like it. So now, Soul Keeper is st uh, stacked to, to 10 stacks here, as high as it can go. But I want you to see how much damage it can do in AoE. All right, so we're going to open up here with the usual. Uh, we're playing Haunt, everything else is usual stuff here. Sacrifice as well. Head is stacked. Say the tank's running into the pack here, right? Precast Seed. Precast the UA. Cast our Haunt, basically when ta tanks pull in the pack. Go Vile Taint. Dark Lair if you want. Put Soul Keeper down. Spam Seed. Watch Soul Keeper. What is that? What is that? What is that Soul Keeper damage off the bat? Like, hello? Like, what is the Soul Keeper damage? Hello? It's 40% of my damage. Like, what is this thing? It's actually insane, right? And I mean, you, you want to rotate between re reapplying your haunt, keeping up your agonies, making sure you're catching them before they fall, all that kind of stuff. I might even lose one here, but it, it's the same general build you had for a while, right? You catch your seeds, catch your vile taints, make sure you know, maintain buffs, all that kind of stuff. And there's a mob that you want to like pry over others just cast you can cast ua on it obviously maintain your haunt if the pack's dying this mob's living for a while you can throw a siphon lamp on it 
swap to rapturing at a certain point too because rapture will bring that more prior damage profile because you have ua malignancy siphon life all that but once again look at soul keeper man look at the damage it does soul combustion is actually wild like it's, it's it's really really strong let's take one more look at it in a more i guess uh a faster opener all right we're gonna go one more time here but this time with actual feeling let's do this so we're at seven stacks of soul keeper it's good enough it's still going to do big damage watch what brim reach does watch what our aoe spikes here too as well Aft's aoe even playing this build without applying siphon life is still pretty strong so once again precast seed uh, we can precast our ua why, why not cast our haunt go into a vile taint here go into a dark glare right there put down our soul combustion thing whatever it is pull us up here might be a little hard to see there we go start spamming seed a bit seed look look at his damage already look at his damage 36 percent i mean grim reach doing a decent bit too at 13.8 but look at our damage here 200k 207 this is like poor charge as well 207 210k catch your dots where they fall here ua agonies but like you have this damage profile with dark glare essentially essentially basically every two minutes right when you pop your dark glare you have your seed profile basically every single pack you've got your prior damage with the, with the ua malignancy being up if there's a mob that's living for a while in the pack for example that you just want to kill or have more damage on say it's higher health than the others just throw a siphon life on it as well and shift to casting rapture when half the pack is dead right look at soul keeper too this is this is like a total of 10 stacks that it's dealt damage with it's rivaling seed of corruption now I could be seeding a bit faster here. We could have lusted, we could have potted, but soul combustion is actually insane in AoE. This talent's like really, really good. So it's not even just the fact that AF got malignancy, that it got sacrifice being fixed with synergy, that it got PI, that you're playing siphon life with Vile Taint for more just prior damage. Soul Keeper's actually really good too. And yes, I mean, I had six stacks here, all that kind of stuff, but you literally get more stacks of Soul Keeper for the mobs you kill you collect tormented souls from each target you kill and occasionally escaped souls so like this is almost like legion reap souls right this ability is really good really sleeper and honestly it's not just af destro and demo are going to want it a lot too when it comes to plus because soul keeper like it's rivaling one of our top damage dealers in aoe it's very very strong but overall this build of af honestly feels pretty good in aoe Solid burst damage, hit, what, 220k there without less than no pot or anything like that? No less, no pot, 220k. Just good. Once again, malignancy feels like that, like that glue that holds the build together because you've got malignancy holding together the, the single target slash prior damage. You've got seed on the AOE side. You've got soul flame on the AOE side in certain dungeons. You've got grim reach on the AOE side at certain points too. Dark lair at the same time, being good in single target. Haunt being good in, oh, okay in single target. Haunt being good in single target. Dread touch being good in single target. This whole row being good in single target. You got a floater point too. You don't want it in wrath, put it in crescendo. You don't want it there, put it here. This too is like the version of AF that we should have had when Dragonflight launched. So yeah, that should about wrap it up. Thanks for watching, guys. I want to apologize, apologize, good lord, off the bat. There's an echo in this room, um, all that. I swear I had to scramble to get my computer built for the video tonight and the setup built and all that kind of stuff. I hear my voice in my head, not like the, you know what I mean? There's an echo in this room. So my apologies, I'll get it fixed and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching, dude. So hopefully the video answered questions you might have had about 10.055F, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you like if you like links to the build, I'll have them both down below in the video description or comment section, one of the two. And uh, yeah, I should be back to streaming tomorrow or today, whenever you're watching this video, as long as everything goes according to plan. I'm pumped for it. It's been six days since I streamed. It's like the longest break I've taken since I moved last time, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's been a while, but I'm pumped to get back. Got keys to farm, uh, loot to not get to drop. I still need my feather, all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, we will uh, go from there. So if you guys have any questions or think I missed anything in the video, put it down below in the comment section. I will be sure to get back to you. And once again, any weak words, add on some profiles in the video. Links to my Twitch and Discord down below where they're all indeed available for, for, for free to you guys. Before we end the video, I also want to give one huge shout out one more time to all my patrons. Guys, thank you a million times for supporting Patreon. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, should be a link up here as well as down below in the video description. This version of AF, like I said, feels like the version of AF we should have had when Dragonflight went live. Malignancy feels like almost like the glue that can hold the spec together. It might take a bit of tuning here and there, maybe some buffs in certain areas. Maybe like we'll see where it goes. But having malignancy around makes AF feel really good. These hybrid builds are playing. The hybrid dread touch grim reach builds playing siphon life and vile taint actually don't they didn't feel that bad in the first place on beta 
but they feel better they feel even better in a sense now because you know like that siphon life that you're playing the value that it brings is actually amplified even more with fm being a thing Aff feels good good aoe probably pretty solid single target too as far as i know demonology is the lowest simming spec for all warlocks now which is surprising but uh destro and aff getting some serious ground and that soul keeper damage dude so we'll see where it goes with that being said thanks for watching guys if you like the video hit the like hit the uh, like and sub buttons below it helps out a ton and i'll catch you all again soon on stream peace